Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is your surgery and for today's videos, our discussion is about the ICD-10 CM code set. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Okay, so let's get started. ICD 10 CM code set training. So, guys, the ICD 10 CM official guidelines for coding and reporting it's under the two U.S. Federal Department of the United of Human Services, which is the DHHS. These are the CMS and the NCHS. Now, guys, the CMS is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, and the NCHS is the National Center for Health Statistics. For for the two departments from the keywords Medicare and Medicaid services, we are talking about the government insurances. And for the keyword statistics, meaning um, they are providing statistics, they are providing data of how many people suffer this kind of illness, like that. So that's for the CMS, obviously for government insurances, you need to have an ICD in order to build a claim. Okay, so I will further discuss what is the purpose of the ICD as we go on through the discussion. So these two U.S. Federal Department of the Human Services provide guidelines for coding and reporting using the International Classification of Diseases from the keyword ICD or International Classification of Diseases or a list of diseases of all a human, human may have. So this is already the 10th revision and it's the clinical modifications. That is the version that they are using in the United States. There are also other modifications that we have. We have the Australian modification like that. For, the, for today's discussion, I will be discussing the CM or the clinical modifications. So the ICD-10 CM is a morbidity classification published by the United States for classifying diagnosis and the reason for visits in all healthcare settings. So remember, if you go to the hospital, if you go to the urgent care center, if you go to the office, you need to have a reason for visits. Now, that reason for visit is very important in order to build a claim and in order to justify any services or procedures done by your provider. So that's how important your ICD-10 CM codes is. Now, if you don't have your book, and before I move forward, if you don't have your book yet, you may download this official guidelines for coding and reporting in cdc.gov. So they have this official guideline PDF file there. Now, if you already have your book, that's very, very good because, you know, you can go ahead and follow me through my discussion of the ICD-10 CM code sets. Okay? So, these guidelines should be used as a companion document to the official version of the ICD-10-CM as published in the NCHS website. So, guys, this ICD-10-CM is a morbidity classification published in the United States. Again, I mentioned a while ago. And these diagnoses are very important in order to build a claim or in order to justify any services provided by the physician. So your ICD-10 CM guys is um, an originally created by our WHO and the main purpose of that is for statistical purposes. Okay, so the, in order for them to know how many patients suffered from this kind of illness, how many patients suffered, suffered already this, um, how many person or how many individuals died in this kind of illness and these are very important statistics in order to formulate you know the future programs or the future guidelines in order to prevent this kind of diseases or this kind of illnesses okay so the use of ICD-10 CM guys the ICD-10 CM code sets is required under the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. So you cannot report or you cannot bill a claim without an ICD-10 CM codes because this is 
required by your HIPAA. Okay? And if you already have your book, open your book, follow my this cash on. So guys, your ICT 10 CM guidelines is divided into four sections. Okay? So for if you are preparing for the CPC exam or COC exam or the CRC exam or even in patient exam, this is also part. But um, if you are focusing in getting the CPC exam or the, or the COC exam or any outpatient coding certification exam, you need to understand the section one part of the official coding guidelines. So your section one includes the structure and conventions of the classification and general guidelines that apply to the entire classification and the chapter specific guidelines that correspond to the chapters as they are arranged in the classifications. So guys, the very important thing or the very important guidelines that you need to know in order to succeed in coding ICD-10 CM successfully is you need to understand, you need to know what is the entire section 1. Okay, so the whole discussion of this free ICD 10 CM training is focusing on the section one. Your section two, guys, includes a guidelines for selection of principal diagnosis for non outpatient setting. From the keyword non outpatient setting, meaning this is used in the inpatient setting. So if you're taking the CPC, you don't need to um, study this first but if you want to pursue your inpatient coding soon you need to also study the section 2 together with the section 3 your section 4 is for outpatient encoding and reporting so this is you need also you need to know you need it's very important to read the section 4 but the whole bulk or the bulk of the discussion will focus on this section one you can go ahead and go through your book check, check through your table of contents go through check for the section one section two section three and section four these are all in the um first page of your book depending on what version or what book are you using so keep in mind that i am using the pdf file okay so the whole section one deals with the conventions so what are the conventions what are the general coding guidelines and the chapter specific guidelines so those are the three major part of the icd 10 cm discussion guys the conventions the general guidelines and the chapter specific guidelines are applicable to all healthcare settings unless otherwise indicated. So, guys, this is applicable in all healthcare settings. So, regardless if that is outpatient, regardless if that is inpatient or ambulatory, those are applicable to all healthcare settings. So the conventions and instructions of the classification take precedence over the guidance. So soon later I uh, will be discussing about this and uh, further specify about the these instructions. So your section one as I mentioned is divided into three. You have your conventions for I for the ICD 10 CM, the general coding guidelines and the chapter specific guidelines so for today's discussion i think i'll touch only the first one the convention for icd 10 cm the first the very very first part and please continue to stay tuned and keep updated to my upload so that you will be notified if i will be discussing the additional conventions the general and the specific coding chapter specific coding guidelines so let's discuss first guys with the conventions 
for the ICD-10-CM. The conventions for the ICD-10-CM are the general rules. Okay? From the keyword general rules for use of the classification, this is independent of the guidelines. Okay? This is a general rule. So remember, there's always the general and there's always the specific guidelines. In all, you know, in all settings, in all um, daily um, life activities, sometimes there are, there are general and there are specific guidelines. So these conventions are incorporated within the alphabetic index and the tabular list of the ICD 10 CM as instructional notes. So, guys, don't be uh, confused about this keywords or these terms alphabetics index and the tabular list i will be discussing them together as we go through the discussions okay so guys the alphabetics index so let's start with the number one the alphabetics index and the tabular list so what is alphabetics index and what is the tabular list now when we hear the word, word alphabetic meaning it's the alphabet from A to Z. Usually, this is the first part of your book. If you already have your book, your alphabetic index. And your alphabetic index is very important because these are the list of terms. And beside them or next to them is the corresponding code. Guys, remember, <coughs> excuse me, when you go through the medical record, okay, there's already this final diagnosis of the physician. The physician will not put in the code there. The, the provider may put in the, the final diagnosis, like for example, headache. Okay? And for example, diarrhea. Or for example, pneumonia. So you need to go through the word headache in the alphabetic index. So from the you need to go through letter H because that is the the first letter of the word headache. You need to go to the H, <clears throat> okay, and look for the word headache. And right after the word headache, there is a code there. Now, for this, you can go ahead and check your book. Go ahead and um, look for the word headache. And there's this uh, code right after the word headache, which is the R51. Guys, when you go through the R51, you need to go through the tabular list. When you say tabular list, these are the list of codes already. So, to give you, to give you an easy understanding about it, the alphabetic index is very important terms or these are very important in order for you guys to have an idea what should be the appropriate codes which is you can find it under the tabular list in the concept of coding it's very important to important to look in the alphabetic index first and then verify the code in the tabular list okay now, this is very easy because there's, there's only one word there. You have your headache, so you can go ahead and look for headache. There's word diarrhea there. You can always go through the alphabetic index and look for diarrhea. And that's it. What if the, 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 the documentation of the doctor is a sentence? Like, or it composed of three, three words like that. So what should be your main third now keep in mind that the list or the alphabetic index is that those are called the main terms and the, they have the sub terms but it's very important to select the correct main term in order for you to um, be guided you know in order for you to select the appropriate code now just to give you an idea about the list of terms these are the common these are the conditions of the patients as you can see headache diarrhea that's the final diagnosis or the conditions of the patient okay 
your tabular list is the list of code. As I, I mentioned a while ago, here in alphabetic index, these are the words or the terms, okay, that is used in the medical record. And when you go to that term, there is a corresponding code right after that code or just below the subterms or as you go through the alphabetic index. And the tabular list is the actual list of codes. So you can see there <clears throat> block or sections, category, subcategory, and the codes. Like for example, we have R51, R62.0, RCC2.50, R85.611, and R s 12591 d These are examples of your codes that you can see in the tabular list. So as we go through later on to the discussion, I will furtherly discuss about the tabular list, those chapters, blocks or sections, categories, subcategories, and the codes. So keep focus on the discussion first. So... Uh, I'm just giving you a, a small or, or a, just a glitch or, or, or what do you call this one? It's your overview of your tabular list. Okay? So, moving on, moving back to your alphabetic index. So, we have your alphabetic index consists of the following parts. So, let's skip a tabular list first because I'll be discussing that later on. So, let's focus first on the alphabetic index. So, your alphabetic index is the first part of your book. Your alphabetic consists of your index for diseases and injuries. You have your index for external causes of injury, the table of neoplasms, and the table of drugs and chemicals from the keyword diseases so most of the time you're going to use the index for diseases and injuries most of the time because that is the bulk of the icd 10 cm code set so i'll discuss i'll be i'll be discussing each of them so index for diseases and injuries index for external causes of injury table of neoplasms and the table of drugs and chemicals so guys to those who have their book already your alphabetic index is appears on the first part of the book okay it's first part of the book those are the terms and codes numbers verified in the tabular list keep in mind as i mentioned a while ago never code directly from the index because you always need to verify that code in the tabular list because it's either there, there are instructions, there are additional digits like that. So for, uh, as I go through that, the discussion, I will be discussing and you will going to understand those keywords that I'm saying now. Okay, so let's start first with the index to diseases. So index to diseases, this is the largest part of the index. Now I'm talking about the index first, the alphabetic index. So there are four parts, remember? The alphabetics, uh, the index to diseases and injuries, the external causes, your table of neoplasm, and table of your drugs and chemicals. So let's discuss first for the index to diseases and injuries. The first step in coding is to locate the main bold term in the index. As I mentioned a while ago, like for example, the, the, the patient is diagnosed with um, low bar pneumonia. Okay, so what should be your main term? The condition of the patient is this, the patient has a pneumonia. So you need to go through in your alphabetic index, go to letter P. Okay, because that's the main bold term. Why I did not use the low bar? Okay, that's just the specificity. Now, remember, the condition is pneumonia. So, remember, as I always give an advice to all those new coders, you need to know the condition of the patient because that is usually the, the, the main term. But keep in mind that, you know, it's a trial and error. You may try low bar, you may try pneumonia, that's fine. I think it, it, the, the book will definitely guide you to the correct term or to the correct code. Okay, choose the appropriate subterm. When you go through your book, you have your these indentions. The first one, the first indention is your main term. 
And we have the first, the, the next indention is the subterms, and you also have another indentions or sub subterms like that. So um, you can relate with me if you have your book. So it's very important that you already have your book when you read this video. But if you just want to have an idea, you can go ahead and still um, go through with that discussion. So your codes, we have three characters, category codes, four to five subcategory codes, three to seven is the valid codes. I'll just go through with this first because I'll be definitely discussing this um, categories, subcategories in when I'll be discussing the tabular list so um let's go ahead and do some example on how to use your alphabetic index okay so you can go through icd10 websites for codes you can select you can you can search icd10 cm websites you can follow me you can you can um do these examples but if you already have your books you can go ahead and search this main terms okay so let's discuss let's have the first example okay chest paid for example the provider documents the chest the, the diagnosis of chest pain okay you can go ahead and look for what main term uh, for me I can go ahead and you may try pain and you may check subterm chest so go to your letter P and I don't I think there's a subterm for chest let's go ahead and look your book okay or you may go ahead to chest trial and error but the condition here is pain so that should be your main bold term and you can go ahead and check for subterm chest or if there are other subterms okay it will direct you to what code okay so what should be your code okay raise your right hand okay so your ch code for chest pain is r07.9 congratulations this is your first code ever okay so as you go through your uh, examples let's have your alzheimer's disease early onset this is this is what i'm talking about a while ago because our example a while ago there's only one word so what if it's just like this you have your um one two three four words so you may what should be your word okay you, you may see disease you may use the main term disease you may use the main term alzheimer's your book will guide you okay i don't want to discuss this further i need you guys to discover how will you arrive to that code you may use the main term alzheimer's and you may use the main term disease but i think that's very it's you can go ahead and select Alzheimer's right away, but you can also use the disease. Okay. But sometimes if you use the disease as a main term, guys, see all, there's always an instruction like see also, see also, or see this one like that. So, you know, it will take time. But you can try, you know, remember, trial and error because that is one way of practicing your al alphabetic index to diseases and injuries so you already have your answer okay hopefully you are correct that is g34.0 because of the word early onset because there's also a code for the late onset for alzheimer's disease and normally you know there are additional codes for G30, but in this discussion, we're only talking about Alzheimer's disease early onset. Another example, Baker C's right knee. So what should be your main term? Okay, Baker's, cyst, or right knee? For me, guys, the condition here is cyst okay you can go ahead 
or you may try bakers. If there's no word for bakers, go to C's and you go to C's and you will look for the subterm bakers. Okay, and I think there's a code already there, but you need to verify that in the tabular list. You need to go to the code to identify the laterality. When I say laterality, guys, later I'll be discussing lateral laterality. Is it right, left, or bilateral. Those are very important, guys, because when you are coding ICD 10 CM, you need to be very specific. Okay, a lot of denials that I encounter as I go through are uh, being denied due to ICD 10 code CM errors. Okay, and, and, and this is very unacceptable, you know, because, you know, like for example, if you're billing around 10,000 worth of service or uh, $5,000 worth of service and it gets denied due to incorrect di ICD-10 diagnosis and you know guys that will delay delay the cash flow now as I go through as I work with physicians or the or, or any other facilities it's very important guys to you to have this correct diagnosis okay so moving back what's your correct code okay Answer together with me, your correct code should be M71.21. Okay, why is it 1? Because it's right. I, I think this is a, a condition on the knee, synovial joint. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Next, traumatic elbow dislocation, subsequent encounter. Oh, wow. So, what should be your main term there? Is it traumatic? Is it elbow? Is it dislocation? subsequent encounter now the first the very first thing that i mentioned a while ago when you are selecting the main term you need to know the condition first and what is the what is the condition of the patient this location okay so you i think you need to go through the word this location you need to know the what type of dislocation. Is it traumatic? You also have this elbow. Remember, you have two elbows. So I think you need to know if it's right or left. But in this example, there is no um, indication if it's it right or left. So you have no choice. You need to have your unspecified. And you also have your subsequent encounter. So later on, as we go through the discussion, I will be discussing about the initial encounter, the subsequent encounter, and the sequela or the sequelae. Okay. Uh, this will take time, guys, for you to um, check for the correct ICD-10 diagnosis. But take your time. Okay. You may pause this video and while selecting so that you don't need to uh, see the correct answer right away. But the correct answer for this is S53.106D. Okay. So, there is a letter before and letter at the end. So, I'll be discussing the format of the codes or the tabular list as we go through the discussion. And the last one, acute myocardial infarction, so what should be your, or heart attack. Remember that, heart attack. And your main term is, what should be your main term? What's the condition? Infarction, I think. Okay, infarction. I think you need to go through infarction. You may try a myocardial if there's a word, myocardial. Again, it's a trial and error, guys. And it's very important for you to know. Actually, it's very important. It's, it's very helpful if you discover yourself. Okay? There's nothing wrong in committing mistakes. There's nothing wrong in, um, you know, in selecting the wrong main term. Because as you go through, you know, practice, practice, and practice. So for this acute myocardial infarction decode is I-21.9. So are you excited? So that's just the first part. Okay? On how you use your alphabetics index to diseases and injuries okay so let's move on so if you want to further um know about the ex uh, you want to get more examples just send me an email shoot me an email 
to gmail.com so that I uh, can give you additional examples and I can also give you additional um, rationale or discussions of those examples. Okay, next one is your ICD 10 CM table of neoplasm. So these are table of neoplasm. So guys, if you're dealing about cancer, if you're coding about cancer or, or benign neoplasm or tumors like that, in in lieu to your alphabetic, in, I mean, to your index of diseases in injuries, they have this separate table. The main purpose of this is to easily, co I mean, to easily select the appropriate code for those cancers or those neoplasms. Okay, remember that your um your table of neoplasm is divided. When you go to the first column, these are divided based on anatomy. Okay. So, remember, if there's a cancer, you need to know, or if there's a neoplasm, um, keep on saying cancer, no? That's neoplasm, okay? When you encounter neoplasm, I mean, when you're coding neoplasm, you need to know the anatomy first. So, just to give you um, an additional information, it's very important, guys, that you have this pre-anatomy classes for you guys to easily, I mean, and it will help a lot, okay, if you have your anatomy classes already, okay, because remember most of the codes, most of the main, the medical terminologies is being used in the ICD-10-CM code sets, okay. So the first one, the first column is about the anatomy. So like for example, there's a neoplasm in the abdominal cavity. So you need to go through abdomen, go to cavity, and you need to go through this one, two, three, four, five, and six columns. Okay. Because remember, there are different type of neoplasm. You have this malignant primary, malignant secondary, carcinoma in situ benign, uncertain, and unspecified behavior. Now, it's very important you, to, to, for you guys to know what is the nature of the neoplasm. It should be always documented in the medical record. Now, if it's not documented in the medical record, you can you can use benign because that's, I think that's, a, that's the default or you also have the unspecified Now, or, or the very important thing you need to know, uh, you need to do is to either query the physician or query the provider. It depends on the guidelines in your settings. But, you know, for you as a coder, you need to understand those six columns. So when we say malignant primary, when we say malignant from the keyword primary, that is the primary source of your malignancy or your cancer. So if the keyword malignant, that means cancer, cancerous or malignant can malignant ca malignant primary cancer or, or malignant primary neoplasm rather so you need to know if there are words like cancerous malignant neoplastic meaning those are pri malignant and when you say primary that is the ori origin of the cancer like for example if you have this um lung cancer and that cancer starts from your lungs that means that cancer in the lungs is the primary malignant cancer or the primary cancer or that is your malignant primary okay so that is where the cancer or the malignancy starts or the origin of the cancer and as you as we all know that cancer might metastasize or it might go through it may affect other organs and when that cancer affects other organs like for example you have this lung cancer and your lung cancer is your primary it metastasize or it affects also your liver okay so you already have this liver cancer already that is due to the lung cancer now if the cancer spread out or metastasized to other organs and that is now called the secondary malignancy 
or malignant secondary because the original cancer came from other organ and it's just spread out to that second organ or to the um right or uh, the organ right beside or um it is spread out to that uh, additional organ so that is your malignant secondary okay Next one is the carcinoma in situ. I rarely, I rarely encounter this, your carcinoma in situ. But from the keyword um, carcinoma, it's cancerous. Yeah, from the, when you hear the word carcinoma, it's also cancerous or malignant. Carcinoma in situ, meaning it is cancerous, but it's confined. Okay, so the, the physician most of the time need to document the word carcinoma in situ. Okay, so it's cancerous, but it's confined. It doesn't spread out. Unlike with, uh, you know, with other cancer that spread out. When you say benign, that is non-cancerous. Okay, uh, and when they say the word tumor like that, you need, also need to know if it's malignant or benign. If it's not, you know, if it's not emph emphasized or it's not documented as, as malignant or benign, you can go and select benign okay because before selecting a malignant it's very important that there's a documentation that it's already malignant or cancerous okay your uncertain meaning it is i don't know what is the difference between uncertain and unspecified <clears throat> when you say uncertain there is a documentation by the provider that it is uncertain or it's not clinically determined Okay, before using uncertain, the provider should document the word clinically uncertain or clinically not identified. Okay, when we see unspecified, it's merely the lack of documentation, like the, the, the provider just document um, abdominal cancer. Okay, so, or, or, or I mean, no, no, no. I'm sorry for that. Um, like, for example, the word tumor, just, you know, what type of tumor? Is it benign or is it unspecified like that? Okay. So, we have unspecified behavior. So, those are differences between your uncertain and unspecified. When you say uncertain, there's a doc clinical documentation that it's uncertain. When you say unspecified, there's a lack of, I mean, there's lack of documentation what type or specific type what specific body part is your 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 your, your neoplasm is okay so you may practice using the table of neoplasm just keep uh just send me an email so that i can give you examples about it and then uh we will be discussing about further as we go through the chapter specific guidelines Okay, so I have an example here, Marilla Neoplasm of the Right Adrenal Medulla. So, uh, like the index to diseases and illnesses, what I usually told a while ago is you need to know the condition or, or the condition of the patient, which is your main term. For your table of neoplasm, you need to know first the anatomy. Okay. So I think your anatomy here is your adrenal, adrenal gland, or the adrenal medulla, mother. Okay, you can go ahead and look for adrenal medulla. It says there, malignant, so meaning it should be your cancerous. Okay, so you need to go through your malignant table. Okay. So the correct code is C74.11. Adenomatous polyp of the rectum. So is there a word, I mean, is there an indication that it is cancer? No. I think adenomatous is just benign. Polyp is just benign, rather. Okay? So you can go ahead and look your anatomy on the rectum. And you need to select the column benign. Because polyp is benign. Okay? With the rectum and you go through polyps okay so the correct code is t12.8 <clears throat> next embryoma of the left ovary i think guys when you hear the word embryoma this is non-specific 
So, it doesn't mean that when you hear the word OMA, that's already cancer. No. You need to um, see a documentation if it's benign or malignant. So, for this, guys, if it's just embryoma, I think this is just, you know, yeah, D39.12. Okay, you can go ahead and sell it. Check for the definition of T39.12. Okay? This is uncertain. Okay? Uh, malignant embryoma of the left ovary. So, it's uh, there's already a doc. I mean, I mean, a documentation of the word malignant. Meaning, you can go ahead and select the first column. Okay? It's very important, guys, to verify the tabular list because you need to know the laterality. Okay? If there's a dash there, when you go to the table, if there's a dash, meaning it needs an additional character. Okay, you need to verify the tabular list. C56.2. Okay. The next one is the table of drugs and chemicals. So from the keyword, drugs and chemicals. So when we are coding about poisoning, <clears throat> we're coding about um, adverse effects, underdosing of drugs and chemicals. You need to go through this table of drugs and chemicals. <clears throat> Unlike with the neoplasm, it is divided based on the anatomy. For the table of drugs, it is divided based on the name of the drugs or the name of the chemicals. <clears throat> So guys, these is, are just not about the drugs. This is also about chemicals. <clears throat> okay? So, uh, it, I, as I always mention, that it's very important to use the table. Okay? I, I understand that when you go through an exam, there's these choices and you need to go through directly to those codes. No. Remember my discussion a while ago? It's very important to verify the index first before you need to go through the table of codes or the tabular list. Okay? So for this one, for example, I have this caffeine. Caffeine here. And your code, your, your, your column is also divided into six. You have your poisoning accidental, poisoning intentional, poisoning assault. Poisoning undetermined, adverse effect, and the under those say. <clears throat> now, um, just to give you a very, very easy trick, you know, easy trick in this your table of drugs. I need you to go through here on the six digit of these codes. When you say to poison accidental, it's one. Poisoning intentional, it's two. Poisoning assault, it's three. The sixth character. Poisoning undetermined, four. And adverse effect is five. And the underdosing is six. Now, guys, if you have these choices in your exam, and you already know that it is an adverse effect, you need to check for the sixth character first. If you see a six character of one there, that's already wrong because we're talking about adverse effects. So you need to have five as the six characters. So that's the easy way. But before going through that easy way, because I'll be definitely discussing that when you go through the, you know, practice exams, the preparation for the exams, I'll be discussing those easy tricks. But for now on, you need to understand first what are those columns. Okay, so let's start about poisoning. As you can see, the first four is about poisoning. And the second two is adverse effect and underdosing. So basically, the focus here is your poisoning. Okay, so when you see poisoning accidental, you know, it's accident. You know, it, it, the, the patient was poisoned accidentally. So if there's no, if there's no documentation, if it's, you know, if there's no other documentation, like uh, if it's, intentional assault undetermined or anything your default is like accidental because there's no one you know no one wants to be poisoned yeah so so that means it's accidental okay so like for example a, a baby or a child take in a bottle of propanolol or propranolol uh, knowing that it's a candy like that so it's a poisoning okay next poisoning intentional 
And what do you mean by poisoning intentional? The common example here, guys, is like, the patient taking a lot overdose, taking a lot of medication because the patient tried to commit suicide. Okay, so that's the common example of poisoning intentional. The patient intentionally taken or intentionally took that drugs or chemicals, um, intentionally overdosed herself or himself in order to be poisoned. Unlike the first one, accidental, it's not intentional, you know, from the keyword. You know, accidental is not intentional, and, and the, the opposite of that is intentional, or not accidental, okay? The third column is poisoning assault. It's quite, I mean, when you say poisoning intentional, the, the himself or herself, okay? The person who, uh, the person intentionally took in the medications or took in the drugs. Unlike with poisoning assault, someone, okay? someone poisoned you that's assault okay different individual uh putting a lot of you know uh medications in your food like that or a drug in your food just to poison you that is an assault okay the fourth one is poisoning undetermined what do you mean by uh, poisoning undetermined it should be clinically documented that the, the, the physician documents that it is undetermined or clinically unidentifiable okay so there should always be um, a documentation okay next one is adverse effect when we see adverse effects so what is the difference between adverse effect and side effect you know that's 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 quite the same um, I'll be discussing more about this but when you see adverse effect it is correctly prescribed correctly taken but um, there is an unexpected result after taking on th these drugs or medications or chemicals okay so the difference between adverse effect and the side effect is your side effect you already know you are already expecting that that is the side effect of that medication if you take in that drug while adverse effect it is unexpected because remember guys they are there are we have a different tolerance to certain medications it might be you might suffer allergy but me i'm not suffering any allergy when i take in that medication so case to case basis so that's why we have this adverse effect and the last one we have underdosing obviously from the keyword underdose the patient taking less and lesser than the prescribed dosage okay that's it self-explanatory you're under dosing so when you see poisoning adverse effects and underdosing of drugs and chemicals the first thing you need to know in the table of drugs is what type of drugs so or what type of of chemicals so keep in mind that they usually the the drugs here i mean the selections here in the table of drugs is your generic name of drugs okay so your index to external causes this so that ends you i mean that is your um alphabetics index to diseases and injuries table of neoplasm table of drugs and chemicals so your index to external causes guys this is a separate index for external causes so these are used for statistical purposes or these are additional information about the nature of injury poisoning and locality so it's never a principal first list of diagnosis it's the same with index to, in to, to the diseases and injuries. They also have these alphabetic indexes. Subterms are indented two spaces to write under the main term. You must locate the term in the index, then confirm in the tabular list. I don't want to highlight more on the index to external causes because I will definitely discuss that in the chapter specific guidelines. Okay? So keep in mind, stay tuned. Up next, I will be discussing about the tabular less so if you like this video don't forget to comment below if the, if anything you want to discuss or if you want to know more about the icd 10 if you have some clarification feel free to email me at blanza at gmail.com so thank you for watching have a have a good day and happy coding